presents our 34th week of live readings with the Persians. I am TJ, I'm our technical director. All of the actors you'll be hearing from tonight are volunteering their time and their talents from their homes to bring a little bit of entertainment into your homes. We want to thank them very much for joining us. We want to send a special thank you to Noah Stanzione for teaching us pronunciation in the half hour before we started. We hope we do him proud, but we apologize in advance. We would like to thank our friend, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare for hosting this on his pages. You can check out his website at shakespeareproofs.com and his Patreon at patreon.com slash Shakespeare. You can find out more about him at the aforementioned website or by visiting his Facebook page, Shakespeare Proves, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. We'll have links to visit him as well as some of our other performer friends in the comments of this video. As always, we want to acknowledge and thank all the medical professionals and essential workers who have been working tirelessly to keep us all as healthy and safe as possible. We also want to acknowledge those demonstrating and protesting. Quite frankly, Black Lives Matter. If you are interested in more information about our totally volunteer organization, check out our website, zenithplayers.com. Feel very free to check out our very attractive donations page. All donations go towards production costs, which these days consist of the very subscriptions that allow for these readings to happen. If you'd like to read with us in future projects, just send us an email at castingazenithplayers.com and we will get you on board. Join us next Saturday as we return to Shakespeare with our postponed reading of Coriolanus. For now, relax and enjoy. Emily Durango as Atossa, Noah Stanzione as the messenger, Marina Cole as the ghost of Darius, Andrew Gelos as Xerxes, with Mira Singer, Shakira Searle, Steve Anderson, Titania Lovett Spence, and John Elsenbeck as the Persians. Away unto the Grecian land have passed the Persian armament. We, by the monarch's high command, we are the warders true who stand. Chosen for honor and descent to watch the wealth of him who went, guards of the gold and faithful styled by Celsus, great Darius's child. But the king went nor came again, and for that host we saw depart arrayed in gold, my boding heart aches with the pulse of anxious pain. Sageful for this youthful king. No scout, no steed, no battle car comes speeding hitherward to bring news to our city from afar. Here were they went away, away, from Susa, from Etoquaterana, from Kissa's time-worn fortress grey, passing to ravage and to war. Some upon steeds, on galley some, some in close files they passed from home, all upon warlike Aaron bent, Armistrius, Artifernia went. Astapazes, Megabazes high, lords of the Persian chivalry, marshals who serve the great king's word, chieftains of all the mighty horde. Horsemen and bowmen streamed away, grim in their aspect, fixed to slay, and resolute to face the fray, with troops of horse careering fast. Mastides, Artemberis passed, Imanris too, the bowman brave, Sosthenes, Pheredines, Drave, and others, the all nursing wave. Of Nihilus to the battle gave, King Sosiscanes, warrior child, and Pegastagon, Egypt's child, the brave Osamus from afar. Did holy Memphis launch to war, and Ariodamus's high in fame? From Phoebes the immemorial came, an oarsman skilled from Nihilus's fen. A countless crowd of warlike men, and next the dainty Lydias went, soft rulers of a continent, Mitragathes and Articulus bold. In twin command, their ranks controlled, and Sardis' town that teems with gold sent forth its squadrons to the war, horse upon horse and car on car. Double and triple teams they rolled, in onset awful to behold. From Thrala's sacred hill there came the native hordes to join the fray. And upon Helius' neck to lay the yoke of slavery and shame, Mardin and Thraburus were there, Bright anvils for the foeman's spear. The Mysian dart men sped to war, and the long crowd that onward rolled from Babylon enriched with gold, captains of ships and archers skilled. To speed the shaft, and those who wield the scimitar, the eastern band, who by the great king's high command swept to subdue the western land. 
gone, are they gone? Ah, well a day, the flower of pride of our array and all in Eastland from whose breast came forth her bravest and her best. Craves longingly with boding dread, parents for sons and brides new wed for <clears throat> absent lords and day by day shudder with dread at their delay. And now they have passed o'er the sea, the manifold host of the king. They have gone forth to sack and burn, ashore on the westland they spring. With cordage and rope, they have bridged the seaway of Helle to pass, o'er the strait that is named by thy name, O daughter of Athamas. They have anchored their ships in the current. They have bridled the necks of the sea. The shepherd and lord of the east hath bidden a roadway to be. From the land to the land they pass over, a herd at the high king's best, some by the way of the waves and some o'er the planking have pressed. King is a lord and a god. He was born of the golden seed that erst upon Danaea fell. His captains are strong at the need and dark is the glare of his eyes as eyes of a serpent blood fed. And with manifold troops in his train and with manifold ships hath he sped. He sped with his Syrian cars. He leads on the lords of the bow to meet with the men of the west, the spear-armed force of the foe. Can any make head and resist him when he comes with the roll of a wave? No baron or nor flanks of might, no chief, be he ever so brave. For stern is the offset of Persia and gallant her children in fight. But the guile of the god is deceitful and who shall elude him by flight? And who is the Lord of the leap that can spring and alight and evade? For Ale deludes and allures till round him the meshes are laid. And no man his doom can escape. It was writ in the rule of high heaven that in tramp of the steeds and in crash of the charge, the war cry of Persia be given. They have learned to behold the forbidden, the sacred enclosure of sea. For the waters are wide, and in stress of the winds, the billows roll hoary to lee. And their trust is in cable and cordage, too weak in the power of the blast, and frail are the links of the bridge whereby unto Hellas they passed. Therefore, my gloom wrapped heart is rent with sorrow, for what may hap tomorrow? Alack for all the Persian armament. Alack, lest there be sent dread news of desolution, Susa's land bereft, forlorn, unmanned. Lest the gray Kissian fortress echo back. The whale, alack, alack, alack. alack. The sound of women's shriek who wail and mourn with fine spun raiment torn. The charioteers went forth nor come again, and all the marching men, even as a swarm of bees have flown afar, drawn by the king to war. Crossing the sea bridge, linked from side to side, that doth the waves divide. And the soft bridal couch of bygone years is now bedewed with tears. Each princess clad in garments delicate wails for her widowed fate. Alas, my gallant bridegroom lost and gone, and I am left alone. But now, ye warders of the state, here in this hall of old renown, behooves that we deliberate in counsel deep and wise debate. For need is surely shown. How fareth he, Darius' child, the Persian king from Perseus styled? Comes triumph to the eastern bow, or hath the lance point conquered now? See, yonder comes the mother queen, light of our eyes in godlike sheen, the royal mother of the king. Fall we before her. Well, it were that all as one we sue to her and round her footsteps cling. Queen among deep-girded Persian dames, thou highest and most royal. Hoary mother, thou of Xerxes and Darius's wife of old. To godlike sire and godlike son we bow us and are loyal, unless on us an adverse tide of destiny has rolled. Therefore come I forth to you, from chambers decked and golden, where long ago Darius laid his head with me beside, 
and my heart is torn with anguish and with terror am I holden. And I plead unto your friendship and I bid you to my side. Darius in the old time by aid of some immortal raised up the stately fabric, our wealth of long ago. But I tremble lest it totter down and ruin porch and portal and the whirling dust of downfall rise above its overthrow. Therefore, a dread unspeakable within me never slumbers, saying, honour not the gods of wealth if men have ceased to grow, nor deem that men, apart from wealth, can find their strength in numbers. We shudder for our light and king, though we have gold enow. No light there is in any house save presence of the master. So runs the saw, ye aged men, and truth it says indeed. On you I call the wise and true to ward us from disaster, for all my hope is fixed on you to prop us in our need. Queen mother of the Persian land, to thy commandment bowing, whate'er thou wilt in word or deed we follow to fulfill. Not twice we need thine high behest, our fair and duty knowing in counsel and in act alike, thy loyal servant still. Long while by various visions of the night am I beset, since to Ionian lands with marshalled hope my son went forth to war. Yet never saw I presage so distinct as in the night now past. Attend my tale, a dream. I had two women nobly clad came to my sight, one robed in Persian dress, the other vested in Dorian garb, and both right stately and more tall by far than women of today, and beautiful beyond disparagement, and sisters sprung both of one race, but by their natal lot, one born in Hellas, one in Eastern land. These as it seemed unto my watching eyes, roused each the other to a mutual feud, the which my son perceiving set himself to check and soothe their struggle, and anon yoked them and set collars on their necks. And one, the Ionian, proud in this array, paced in high quietude and lent her mouth obedient to the guidance of the rein. But, Restively the other strove and broke the fittings of the car and plunged away with mouth unbitten. Oh, the broken yoke my son was hurled and lo, Darius stood in lamentation o'er oh, his fallen child. Him Xerxes saw and rent his robe in grief. Such was the vision of the night now past, but when arising, I had dipped my hand in the fair lustral stream, I drew towards the altar in the act of sacrifice, having in my mind to offer as their due the sacred meal cake to the averting powers, lords of the right that banish ill dreams. When, lo, I saw an eagle fleeing fast to Phoebus's shrine. Oh, friends, I stayed my steps, too scared to speak, for close upon his flight, a little falcon dashed in winged pursuit, plucking with claws the eagle's head, while he could only crouch and cower and yield himself. Scared was I by that sight, and eke to you no less a terror must it be to hear. For, mark this well, if Xerxes have prevailed, he shall come back the wonder of the world. If not, Still, none can call him to account. So he but live, he liveth Persia's king. Queen, it stands not with my purpose to abet these fears of thine, nor to speak with glazing comfort. Nay, betake thee to the shrine, if thy dream foretold disaster sue the gods to bar its way, and for thyself, son, state, and friends to bring fair fate today. Next unto earth and to the dead be due libation poured, and by thee let Darius' soul be wistfully implored. I saw thee, Lord, in last night's dream, a phantom from the grave. I pray thee, Lord, from earth beneath, come forth to help and save. Me and to thy son send up the bliss of triumph now, 
and hold the gloomy fates of ill dim in the dark below. Such be thy words. My inner heart the good tidings doth foretell, and that fair fate will spring thereof if wisdom guide us well. Loyal thou that first hast thread this dream, this vision of the night, with loyalty to me, the queen. Be then thy presage right, and therefore, as thy bidding is, what time I pass within to dedicate these offerings, new prayers I will begin, alike to gods and the great dead who loved our lineage well. Yet, one more word. Say, in what realm do the Athenians dwell? Far uh, hence, even where in evening land goes down our lord the sun. Say, had my son so keen desire that that region to o'errun? Yea, if she fell, the rest of Greece were subject to our sway. Hath she so great predominance, such legions in array? Ay, such a host as smote us sore upon an earlier day. And what hath she beside her men? An hour of wealth in store? A mine of treasure in the earth, a fount of silver ore. Is it in skill of bow and shaft that Athens' men excel? Nay, they, be, they bear bucklers in the fight and thrust the spear point well. And who is the shepherd of their host and holds them in command? To no man do they bow as slaves, nor own a master's hand. How should they bide our brunt of war, the east upon the west? That could Darius's valiant horde in days of your attest. Ugh, a boding word to who, those who bore the men now far away. Nay, as I deem the very truth will dawn us today. A Persian by his garb and speed, a courier draws anear. He bringeth news of good or ill for Persia's land to hear. O oh, walls and towers of all the Asian realm, O oh, Persian land, O oh, treasure house of gold, how mm. by one stroke down to destruction, down hath sunk our pride, and all the flower of war that once was Persia's lieth in the dust. Woe on the man who first announceth woe, yet I must all the tale of death unroll. Heart me, Persians, Persia's host, lies low oh ruin manifold and woe and fear let the wild tears run down for the great doom is here this blow hath fallen into the utterance and i past hope behold my safe return too long alack too long this life of mine that in mine age i see this sudden woe condign as one who saw by no loose rumor led lords I would tell what doom was let, dealt to us. Alack, how vainly have they striven. Our myriad hordes with shaft and bow went from the Eastland to lay low Helios, beloved of heaven. Piled with men dead, yea, miserably slain is every beach, every reef of Salamis. Thou sayest sooth. Uh, well, a day battered amid the waves and torn on surges hither, thither borne. Dead bodies, blood-stained and forlorn, in their long cloaks they toss and stray. Their bows availed not. All have perished, all by charging galleys crushed and whelmed in death. Shriek out your sorrow's wistful wail, to their untimely doom they went. Il strove and to no avail, and minished is their armament. Out on the hateful name of Salamis, out upon Athens' mournful memory. Woe upon this day's evil fame, thou Athens art our murderous alack, full of many Persians' dame is left forlorn, forlorn and husbandless. Mute have I been a while, and overwrought at this great sorrow. For it passeth speech, and passeth all desire to ask of it. Yet, if the gods send evils, men must bear. 
unroll the record. Stand composed and tell, although thy heart be groaning inwardly, who hath escaped? And of our leaders, whom have we to weep? What chieftains in the van stood, sank and died and left us leaderless? Nurse himself survives and oh. sees the day. Oh, then to my line thy word renews the dawn and golden day spring after gloom of night. But the brave marshal of 10,000 horse, our Tambaris, is tossed and flung in death along the rugged rocks of Lydian. And Didaches no longer leads his troops, but smitten by the spear from off the prow, hath lightly leaped death. And Tanagon, in true descent of Bactria, nobly born, drifts by the sea-lashed reefs of Salamis, the Isle of Ajax. Gone Lilius too, gone are Arsames and Argestes, all around the island where the sea doves breed, dashed their defeated heads on iron rocks. Arceus, who dwelt beside the founts of Niles, Agius, Phereseus, and with them Pharmacus, from one galley's deck went down, Metallus too of Chrysa, lord and king of myriad hordes, who led into the fight three times ten thousand swarthy cavaliers fell. Their swarthy and abundant beard incarnadine to red, a crimson stain outrivaling the purple of the sea. Their Magian, Arabus, and Artemis of Bactria perished, taking up alike in yonder stony land their long sojourn. Mistress, too, and he whose strenuous spear was foremost in the fight, Amphistraeus fell, and Garen, gallant Ariamadaris, by whose death broods sorrow upon Sardis. Missium mourns for Sisamese, and Therubus lies low, commander. He of five times fifty ships born in Lamessus. His heroic form is low in death, ungraced with sepulchre. That too is he, the lord of courage, high Cilicia's marshal, brave Serenius, than whom none dealt more carnage on the foe, nor perished by more heroic end. So fell the brave, so speak I of their doom, summing in brief the fate of myriads. Ah, oh, well a day. These crowning woes I hear, the shame of Persia and her shrieks of dole. But yet renew the tale, repeat thy words. Tell o'er the count of those Hellenic ships and how they ventured with their beakered prows to charge upon the Persian armament. No, if mere count of ships could win the day, the Persians had prevailed. The Greeks in sooth had by 300 galleys at the most and other 10 Select and separate. But I'm witness, Xerxes held command of full a thousand keels, and those apart two hundred more, and seven for speed renowned. So stands the reckoning, and who shall dare to say we Persians had the lesser host? Nay, we were worsted by an unseen power who swayed the balance downward to our doom. In ward of heaven doth Pallas city stand. How then? Is Athens yet inviolate? While her men live, her bulwark standeth firm. Say, how began the struggle of the ships? Who first joined issue? D did the Greeks attack or Xerxes in his numbers confident? O oh, Queen, our whole disaster thus befell through the intervention of some fiend or fate, I, I know not what, that had ill will toward us. When the Athenian host, some Greek came o'er, to thy son Xerxes whispering this tale. Once let the gloom of night have gathered in, the Greeks will tarry not, but swiftly spring each to his galley bench in furtive flight, softly contriving safety for their life. 
thy son believed the word and missed the craft of the Greek froman. And the spite of heaven and straight to all his captains gave this charge. And as soon as the sunlight warms the ground no more and gloom enwraps the sanctuary of sun, range we our fleet in triple serried lines to bar the passage from the seething strait. This way and that let other ships surround the Isle of Ajax with this warning word. That if the Greeks their jeopardy should scape by wary craft and win their ships a road, each Persian captain shall his failure pay by forfeit of his head. So spake the king, inspired at heart with overconfidence, unwitting of the gods' predestined will. Thereon our crews with no disordered haste did service to his bidding and pervade the meal of afternoon. Each rower then over the fitted rowlock looped his oar. Then when the splendor of the sun had set and night drew on, each master of the oar and each armored warrior straightway went aboard. Forward, the long ships moved, rank, cheering rank, each forward set upon its ordered course. And all night long, the captains of the fleet kept their crews moving up and down the strait. So the night waned, and not one gracious Grecian slip made effort to elude and slip away. But as dawn came, and with her courses white shone in fair radiance over all the earth, first from the Grecian fleet rang out a cry, a song of onset, and the island crags re-echoed to the shrill, exulting sound. Then on us, eastern men, amazement fell and fear in place of hope. For what we heard, what we heard was not a call to flight. Greeks rang out their holy, resolute, exulting chant like men come forth to dare and do and die. Their trumpets peeled and fire was in that sound. And with the dash of simultaneous oars replying to the war chant, on they came smiting the swirling brine, and in a trice they flashed upon the vision of the foe. The right wing, first in orderly advance, came on a steady column. Following then, the rest of their array moved out and on, and to our ears there came a burst of sound, a clamor manifold. On, sons of Greece, on for your country's freedom. Strike to save wives, children, temples of ancestral gods, graves of your fathers. Now is all at stake. And from our side swelled up the mingled din of Persian tongues, and time brooked no delay. A ship into ship drave hard its brazen beak with speed of thought, a shattering blow. And first one Grecian bark plunged straight and sheared away bowsprit and stem of a Venetian ship. And then each galley on some other's prow came crashing in. A while our stream of ships held onward till within the narrowing creek our jostling vessels were together driven. None could aid another. Each on each drave hard their brazen beaks or break away the oar banks of each other stern to stern while uh, those Greek galleys with no lack of skill hemmed them and battered in their sides and soon the holes rolled over and the sea was hid crowded with wrecks and butchery of men no beach nor reef but was with corpses strewn in every keel of our barbarian coast, a host hurried to flee in utter disarray. There on the flow, foe closed in upon the wrecks and hacked and hewed with oars and splintered planks as fishermen hacked tunnies or a cast of netted dolphins. And the briny sea rang with the screams and shrieks of dying men until the night's dark aspect hid the scene. Had I ten days' time to sum that count of carnage, twere too little. 
know this well, one day ne'er saw such myriad forms of death. Woe on us. Oh, woe. Disaster's mighty sea hath burst, burst on us and all the Persian realm. Well, be well assured, the tale is but begun. Further agony that fell on us doth twice outweigh the sufferings I've told. Nay, nay, what disaster could be worse than this? Say on, what woe upon the army came, swaying the scale to yet a further fall? Very flower and crown of Persia's race, gallons of soul and glorious and descent and highest held in trust before the king, lies shamefully and miserably slain. Oh, alas, for me and for this ruin, friends, dead, sayest thou, by what fate overthrown? An eyelid is there, fronting Salamis, straight and with evil anchorage. Thereon Pan treads the measure of the dance he loves along the sea beach. Thither the king sent his noblest, that when e'er the Grecian foe should scape with scattered ships unto the isle, we might make easy prey of fugitives and slay them there, and from the watching tides rescue our friends fell out otherwise than he divined, for when by aid of heaven the Hellenes held the victory on the sea, their sailors then and there begirt themselves, brazen mail and bounded from their ships, and then enringed the islet point by point, so that our Persians in bewilderment knew not which way to turn. On every side, battered with stones they fell, while arrows flew from many a string and smote them to their death. Then at the last, with simultaneous rush, the foe came bursting on us, hacked and hewed to fragments all that miserable band, till not a soul of them was left alive. Then Xerxes saw disaster's death and shrieked from where he sat on high, surveying all a lofty eminence beside the brine whence all his armament lay clear in view. His robe he rent with loud and bitter wail and to his land force swiftly gave command and fled with shame beside him. Now lament that second woe upon the first imposed. Out on the fortune! Thou hast foiled the hope and power of Persia. To this bitter end, my son went forth to wreak his great revenge on famous Athens. All too few they seemed, our men who died upon the fennel field. Vengeance for them my son had mine to take and drew on his own head these whelming woes. But thou, Say on, the ships that scaped the wreck, where didst thou leave them? Make thy story clear. The captains of the ships that still survived fled in disorder, scudding down the winds, the, while our land force on Boeotian soil fell into ruin. Some beside the springs dropping before they drank, and some outworn, pursued, and Panting all their life away. The rest of us, our way to focus one, and thence to Doris in the Melian Gulf, where with soft string Spurcius laves the soil. Thence to the northward did Pythios's plain, and some Thessalian fortress lend us aid, for famine pinched we were, and many died of drought and hunger's twofold present scourge. Thence to Magnesia came we, and the land where Macedonians dwell, and crossed the ford of Axius, and Bulby's reedy fen, and Mount Pangius in the Edonian land. There in the very night we came, the god 
brought winter ere its time from bank to bank, freezing the holy Strimian's tide. Each man who heretofore had held lightly of the gods, now crouched and prophet prepared to earth, heaven. Then after many orisons performed, the army ventured on the frozen ford. It's only those who crossed before the sun shed its warm rays, one to the farther side. For soon the fervor of the glowing orb did with its keen rays pierce the ice-bound stream, and men sank through and thrust each other down. Best was his lot whose breath was stifled first. But all who struggled through and gained the bank, toyfully wending through the land of Thrace, have made their way a sorry, scanted few unto this homeland. Let the city now lament and yearn for all the loved and lost. My tale is truth, yet much untold remains of the ills that heaven hath hurled upon our land. Spirit of fate, too heavy were thy feet, those ill to match that sprang on Persia's realm. For the host to rack and ruin hurled. Oh, warning of the night, prophetic dream. Thou didst foreshadow clearly all this doom, while ye, old men, made light of women's fears. Ah, well. Yet, as your divination ruled the meaning of the sign, I hold it good first that I put up prayer unto the gods, and after that forth from my palace bring the sacrificial cake, the offering due to earth and to the spirits of the dead. Too well I know it is a timeless rite over a finished thing that cannot change. But yet, I know not, there may come of it alleviation for the aftertime. You, it beseems, in view of what hath happed, to advise with loyal hearts our loyal guards. And to my son, if ere my coming forth he should draw hitherward, give comfort meet, escort him to the palace in all state, lest to these woes he add another woe. Zeus, Lord and King, to death and naught our countless host by thee is brought. Deep in the gloom of death today lies Susa and Ecbatana. How many a maid in sorrow stands and rends her tire with tender hands. How tears run down in common pain and woeful mourning for the slain. O oh, delicate and dole and grief, ye Persian women, past relief is now your sorrow. To the war your loved ones went and come no more. Gone from you is your joy and pride, severed the bridegroom from the bride, the wedded couch luxurious, is widowed now and all the house. Lines ever with insatiate sighs and we stand here and bid arise for those who forth in ardor went and come not back, the loud lament. Land of the East, Thou mournst for the host, bereft of all thy sons, alas the day, for them whom Xerxes led hath Xerxes lost, Xerxes who wrecked the fleet and flung our hopes away. How came it that Darius once controlled, and without scathe the army of the bow, loved by the folk of Susa, wise and bold? Now is the land forced lost, the shipmen sunk below. Ah, for the ships that bore them, woe is me, bore them to death and doom. The crashing prows of fierce Ionian oarsmen swept the sea, and death was in their wake, and shipwreck murderous. Late, late and hardly, if true tales they tell, did Xerxes flee along the wintry way and snows of Thrace. But ah, the first who fell lie by the rocks, or float upon Cycrea's bay. Mourn each and all, waft heavenward your cry, stung to the soul, bereaved disconsolate. Wail out your anguish till it pierce the sky, 
in shrieks of deep despair, ill omen desperate. The dead are drifting, yea, are not upon by voiceless children of the stainless sea or battered by the surge. We mourn and groan for husbands gone to death for childless agony. Alas, the aged men who mourn today, the ruinous sorrows that the gods ordain. O'er the wild Asian land, the Persian sway can force no tribute now and can no rule sustain. Yea, men will crouch no more to fall and pile, and kingship overthrown. The whole land o'er, men speak the thing they will, and from this hour the folk whom Celsius ruled obey his word no more. The yoke of force is broken from the neck, the Isle of Ajax and the encircling wave reek with a bloody crop of death and wreck of Persia's fallen power that none can lift nor save. Friends, whosoever is versed in human ills knoweth right well that when a wave of woe comes on a man, he sees in all things fear, while in flood tide of fortune Tis his mood to take that fortune as unchangeable, wafting him ever forward. Mark me now. The gods thwart purpose doth confront my eyes, and all is terror to me. In mine ears there sounds a cry, but not of triumph now. So am I scared at heart by woe so great. Therefore, I wend forth from the house anew, born in no car of state, nor robed in pride as heretofore, but bringing for the sire who did beget my son, libations meet for holy rites that shall appease the dead. The sweet white milk drawn from a spotless cow, the oozing drop of golden honey culled by the flower haunting bee, and therewithal pure draughts of water from a virgin spring. And lo, besides the stainless effluence, born of the wild vine's bosom, shining store treasured to age this bright and luscious wine. And eke the fragrant fruit upon the bough of this the grey olive tree, which lives its life in sprouting leafage, and the twining flowers bright children of the earth's fertility. But you, oh friends, above these offerings poured to reconcile the dead, ring out your dirge to summon up Darius from the shades, himself a shade, and I will pour these draughts, which earth shall drink unto the gods of hell. Queen, by the Persian land adored, be this, by thee be this libation poured, passing to those who hold command of dead men in the spirit land. And we will sue in solemn chant that gods who do escort the dead in neither realms our prayer may grant, back to us be Darius led. O earth and Hermes, the king of Hades, our Darius bring, for if beyond the prayers we prayed, he knoweth aught or help or aid. He, he alone in realms below can speak the limit of our woe. Doth he hear me, the king we adored, who is God among gods of the dead? Doth he hear me send out my, my sorrow, the pitiful manifold cry? The sobbing lament and appeal is the voice of my suffering sped to the realm of the shades. Doth he hear me and pity my sorrowful sigh? O oh, earth, and ye lords of the dead, release ye that spirit of might, who in Susa the palace was born. Let him rise up once more to the light. There is none like him, none of all, that e'er were laid in Persian's sepulchre. Born forth he was to honoured burial of royal heart, and followed by our tears. God of the dead, oh, give him back to us, Darius, ruler glorious. He never wasted us with reckless war. God, counselor and king beneath a happy star. Ancient of days and king, awake and come. Rise o'er the mountain tomb. Rise, plant thy foot with saffron sandals shod. Father to us and God. 
rise with the die, rise with thy diadem, O sire benign, upon thy brow. List to the strange new sorrows of thy line, sire of a woeful son. Mist of fate and hell is round us now, and all the city's flower to death is done. Alas, we wept thee once and weep again. O oh, Lord of lords, by recklessness twofold. The land is wasted of its men, and down to death are rolled, wreckage of sail and oar. Ships that are ships no more, and bodies of the slain. Ye aged Persians, truest of the true, coevals of the youth that once was mine, what troubleth now our city? Hearken how it moans and beats the breast and rends the plain, and I, beholding how my consort stood beside my tomb, was moved with awe and took the gift of her libation graciously. But ye are weeping by my sepulchre and trilling forth a sad, evoking cry, summon me mournfully, arise, arise, no light thing is it to come back from death. For in good sooth, the gods of nether gloom are quick to seize, but late and loth to free. Yet among them, I dwell as one in power. And lo, I come. Now speak and speed your words, lest I be blamed for tarrying over long. What new disaster broods o'er Persia's realm? With awe on thee I gaze, and standing face to face, I tremble as I did in olden days. Nay, but as I rose to earth again, obedient to your call, prithee tarry not in parley, be one word enough for all, speak and gaze on me unshrinking, neither let my face appall. I tremble to reveal yet tremble to conceal things hard for friends to feel. Nay, but if the old time terror on your spirit keeps its hold, speak thou, O royal lady who didst couch with me of old. Stay thy weeping and lamenting and to me reveal the truth, speak. For man is born to sorrow, yea, the proverb saith sooth. Tis the doom of mortal beings, if they live to see old age, to suffer bale by land and sea, through war and tempest's rage. Oh, thou whose blissful fate on earth all mortal weal excelled, who, while the sunlight touched thine eyes, the lord of all wert held, a god to Persian men thou wert, in bliss and pride and fame. I hold thee blessed too in thy death, or ere the ruin came. Alas, Darius, one brief word must tell thee all the tale. The Persian power is in the dust, gone down with blood and bale. Speak, by what chance? Did man rebel or pestilence descend? Neither. By Athens' fatal shores our army met its end. Which of my children led our host to Athens? Speak and say. The froward Xerxes, leaving all our realm to disarray. Was it with army or with fleet on folly's quest he went? With both alike twofold front of double armament. And how then did so large a host on foot pass o'er the sea? He bridged the ford of Hellas straight by artful carpentry. How? Could his craft avail to span the torrent of that tide? Tis sooth, I say, some unknown power did fatal help provide. Alas, that power in malice came to his bewilderment. Alas, we see the end of all, the ruin on our scent. Well, speak, tell me how they fared therein, that thus ye mourn and weep. Disaster to the army came, through ruin on the deep. 
Is all undone? Hath all the folk gone down before the foe? Yea. Hark to Susa's morning cry for warriors laid low. Alas for our gallant aids, our Persia's health and pride. Ay, old with young, the Bactrian forth hath perished at our side. Alas, my son, what gallant youths hath he sent down to death? Alone, or with a scanty guard, for so the rumour saith. He came, but how? And to what end doth aught of hope remain? With joy he reached, reached the bridge that spanned the Hellas Point main. How? Is he safe in Persian land? Speak soothly, yea or nay. Clear and more clear the rumour comes, for no man to gainsay. Woe for the oracle fulfilled. The presage of the war launched on my son by will of Zeus. I deemed our doom afar in lap of time. But if a king push forward to his fate, the god himself allures to death that man infatuate. So now the very fount of woe streams out on those I loved, and mine own son unwisely bold the truth hereof hath proved. He sought to shackle and control the Hellas Point wave that rushes from the Bosphorus with fetters of a slave to curb and bridge with welded links the streaming waterway and guide across the passage broad his manifold array. Ah, folly void of counsel. He deemed that mortal right could thwart the will of heaven itself and curb Poseidon's might was it not madness? Much I fear lest all my wealth and store pass from treasure house to be the snatcher's prize once more. Such is the lesson, uh, too late to eager Xerxes taught, trusting random counselors and harebrained men of naught who said, Darius mighty wealth and fame to us did bring, but thou art naught, a blunted spear, a palace keeping king. Unto those sorry counsellors a ready ear he lent, <clears throat> and led away to Hellas's shore his fated armament. Therefore through them hath come calamity most huge and past forgetting. Nor of old did e'er such extermination fall upon the city of Susa. Long ago Zeus in his power this privilege bestowed that with a guiding scepter one sole man should rule this Asian land of flock and herd. Over the Mede Estiages did grasp the power. Then Syaxares ruled in his sire's place and held the sway aright, steering his state with watchful wariness. Third in succession, Cyrus, blessed of heaven, held rule and established peace for all his clan. Lydian and Phrygian won he to his sway, and wide Ionia to his yoke constrained. For the god favored his discretion sage. Fourth in the dynasty was Cyrus' son, and fifth was Mardus, scandal of his land, and an ancient lineage. Him, heart of Phrynes, hardy of heart within his palace, slew, aided by loyal plotters set for this. And I too gained the lot for which I craved, and oftentimes let out a goodly host, yet never brought disaster such as this upon the city. But my son is young and reckless in his youth, and heedeth not the warnings of my mouth. Mark this, my friends, born with my birth, coeval of Mine age, not all we kings who held successive rule have wrought, combined such ruin as my son. How then, O King Darius, whitherward dost thou direct thy warning? From this plight, how can we Persians fare toward hope again? By nevermore assailing Grecian lands, 
even though our median force be double theirs, for the land self protects its denizens. Oh, meanest thou, by what defensive power? She wastes by famine a two countless foe. But uh, we will bring a host more skilled than huge. Why? Even that army, camped in Hellas still, shall never win again to home and wheel. How sayest thou, will not all the Asian host pass back from Europe over Hellas ford? Nay. Scarce a tithe of all those myriads, if man may trust the oracles of heaven when he beholds the things already wrought, not false with true, but true with no word false, if what I trow be truth, my son has left a chosen rearguard of our host, in whom he trusts now with a random confidence. They tarry where Esopus laves the ground, with rills that softly bless Boeotia's plain, there is it fated for them to endure the very crown of misery and doom, requital for their God-forgetting pride. For why? They raided Hellas, had the heart to wrong the images of holy gods and give the shrines and temples to the flame. Defaced and dashed from sight, the altars fell, and each god's image from its pedestal thrust and flung down in dim confusion lies. Therefore, for outrage vile, a doom as dark they suffer, and yet more shall undergo. They touch no bottom in the swamp of doom, but round them rises bubbling up the ooze. So deep shall lie the gory clotted mass of corpses by the Dorian spear transfixed upon Plataea's field. Yea, piles of slain to the third generation shall attest by silent eloquence to those that see. Let not a mortal vaunt him overmuch, for pride grows rankly, and to ripeness brings the curse of fate and reaps for harvest tears. Therefore, when ye behold for deeds like these such stern requital paid, remember then Athens and Hellas. Let no mortal write holding too lightly of his present wheel and passionate for more, cast down and spill the mighty cup of his prosperity. Doubt not that over proud and haughty souls Zeus lures in wrath, exacting the account. Therefore, with wary warning, school my son. Though he be lessened by the gods already, to curb the vaunting that affronts high heaven. And thou, O oh, venerable mother queen, beloved of Xerxes, to the palace pass and take therefrom such raiment and as befits thy son, and go to meet him. For his garb in this extremity of grief hangs rent around his body, woefully unstitched, mere tattered fragments of once royal robes. Go thou to him. Speak soft and soothing words. Thee and none other will he bear to hear, as well I know. But I must pass away. From earth above unto the nether gloom. Therefore, old men, take my farewell and clasp, even amid the ruins of this time, unto your souls the pleasures of thy day. For dead men have no profit of their gold. Alas, I thrill with pain for Persia's woes, many fulfilled and others hard at hand. Oh. Spirit of the race, what sorrows crowd upon me. And this, 
anguish stings me worse that round my royal son's dishonoured form hang rags and tatters, degradation deep. I will away, and bringing from within a seemly royal row, will straightway strive to meet and greet my son. Foul scorn it were to leave our dearest in his hour of shame. Glorious and goodly they were, the life and lot we gained, the cities we held in our hand when the monarch invincible reigned, the king that was good to his realm, sufficing, fulfilled of his sway, a lord that was peer of the gods, the pride of the bygone day. Then could we show to the skies great hosts and a glorious name, and laws that were stable in might, as towers that guarded our fame. There, without woe or disaster, we came from the foe and the fight in triumph, enriched with the spoil to the land and city's delight. What towns are the Hellespe he passed? What towns ere he came to the west, to the main and the isles of the Strymon and the Thracian region possessed? And those that stand back from the main, and ringed by their fortified wall, Give over to Darius, the king, the scepter and sway over all. Those too by the channel of Hillel, where southward it broadens and glides by the inlets Pompontus of V and the strait of the Pontic tides, and the isles that lie fronting our seaboard, and the east land looks on each one, Lesbo and Chios and Paos and Samos with olive trees grown. And Naxos and Mykonos Rock and Tenos and Andros hard by, the isles of the midmost Aegean aloof from the continent lie, and Lemnos and Icaros hold. All these to his scepter bowed, and Sindos and neighboring Rhodes and Soli and Paphos the proud. And Scythian Salamis, name child of her who hath wrought us this wrong. Yea, and all the Ionian tract where the Greek-born inhabitants throng, and the cities are teeming with gold, Darius was lord of them all, and great by his wisdom he ruled, and ever there came to his call. In stalwart array and unfailing, the warrior chiefs of our land, and mingled allies from the tribes who bowed to his conquering hand. But now there are none to gainsay, that the gods are against us. We lie subdued in the havoc of wreck and whelmed by the wrath of the sky. Alas, the day that I should fall into this grimmest fate of all, this ruin doubly unforeseen. On Persia's land, what power of fate descends, what lowering gloom of hate. How shall I bear my team? My limbs are loosed where they stand when I behold this aged band. Oh, gods, I would that I too I among the men who went to die were whelmed in earth by fate's command. Ah, oh, well a day, my king. Ah, woe for all our heroes overthrow. For all the gallant hosts array, for Persia's honor passed away. Glory and heroic sway, mown down by fortune's hand today. Hark how the kingdom makes its moan for youthful valor lost and gone. By Xerxes seas shattered and undone, he have, com he have crammed the moor of hell with bowmen brave who nobly fell, their country's mighty armament. Ten thousand heroes deathward sent, alas, for all the valiant band, O king and lord. Thine Asian land down upon its knee is bent. Alas, a lamentable sound, a cry of ruth, for I am bound, a curse to land and lineage, with none my sorrow to assuage. Alas, a death song desolate, I send forth for thy homecoming. A scream, a dirge for woe and fate, such as the Asian mourners sing. 
the sorry and ill-omened tale of tears and shrieks in eastern wail. Ay, launch the woeful sorrow's cry, the harsh discordant melody. For lo, the power we held for sure hath turned to my discomfiture. Yea, dirges, dirges manifold will I send forth for warriors bold, for the sea sorrow of our host. The city mourns, and I must wail with plashing tears our sorrow's tale, lamenting for the loved and lost. Alas, the god of war who sways the scales of fright in diverse ways gives glory to Ionia. Ionian ships in fenced array have reaped their harvest in the bay, a darkling harvest field of fate, a sea ashore doom and hate. Cry out and learn the tale of woe. Where are thy comrades? Where the band who stood beside thee hand in hand a little while ago? Where now have Pharadokis gone? Where Pesamus and where Pelagion? Where now is brave Agadavatis? And Susus too and Dadamus. Have Susisanus passed away, the chieftain of Ecbatana? I left them mangled castaways, flung from their Tyrian deck and tossed on Salamanian waterways from surging tides to rocky coast. Alack, and is Pharnacus slain, and Arodimus brave in vain? Where is the Serucules, heart of fire, Lilacus, child of noble sire? Tharubis and Memphis sped, Hestaicmas, Atambris dead. Where is brave Masistus? Where? Sum up death's count that I may hear. Alas, alas, they came, their eyes surveyed, ancestral ass Athens on that fatal day. Then with a rending struggle were they laid upon the land and gasped their life away. And Batinokis' child, Alpist is great, surnamed the Eye of State. Saw you and left him who once of old ten thousand fighting men enrolled? His sire was child of Sesimus, and he from Megabate sprang. Oh, woe is me, thou king of evil fate, hast thou lost Parthus, lost Obares great? Alas, the sorrow, blow succeeds, succeedeth blow, on Persia's pride thou tellest woe on woe. Bitter indeed the pang for comrades slain. The brave and the bold thou strikest to my soul. Pain, pain beyond forgetting, hateful pain. My inner spirit sobs and sighs with dole. Another yet we yearn to see and see not. Ah, thy chivalry. Xanthus, thou chief of Mardian men, countless, and thou, and Carnes bright, and ye whose cars controlled the fight, Arcases and Dixius right. Pigdatus, Lithimnus dear, and Tolmus greedy of the spear, I stand bereft, not in thy train come they as erst, ah, never again. Shall they return unto our eyes, far born neath silken canopies? Yea. Gone are they who mustered once the host. Yea, yea, forgotten, lost. Alas, the woe and cost. Alas, ye heavenly powers, ye wrought a sorrow past belief, a woe of woes the sheaf, with aspect stern upon us eight looms. Smitten are we, time tells no heavier blow. Smitten. The doom is plain. Curse upon curse and pang on pang, we know. With the Ionian power, we clash in evil hour. Woe falls on Persia's race. Yea, woe again, again. Yea, smitten am I, and my host is all to ruin hurled. Yea, verily, in mighty wreck hath sunk the Persian world. <laughs> See you this tattered rag of pride. I see it well a day. See you this quiver. Say, hath aught survived and escaped the fray? 
A store for darts it was erewhile. Remain but two or three. No aid is left. Ionian folk such darts on fearing see. Right resolute they are. I saw disaster unforeseen. Ah, uh, speakest thou of wreck, of flight, of carnage that hath been? Yea, and my royal robe I rent in terror at their fall. Alas, alas! Yea, thrice alas! For all have perished, all! Uh, woe to us, a uh, joy to them who stood against our pride. And all our strength is minished and sundered from our side. No escort have I. Nay, thy friends are welcome, whelmed beneath the tide. Wail, wail the miserable doom, and to the palace high. Alas, 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 alas and woe alas. again. Shriek, smite the breast as I. An evil gift, a sad exchange of tears poured out in vain. Shrill out your simultaneous wail. Alas, the woe, woe and pain. pain. Oh, bitter is this adverse fate. I voice the moan with thee. Smite, smite thy bosom. Groan aloud for my calamity. I mourn and am dissolved in tears. Cry, beat thy breast amain. O king, my heart is in thy woe. Shriek. Wail and shriek again. Oh, agony. Oh, oh, agony. A blackening blow. A grievous stripe shall fall. Yea, beat anew thy breast. Ring out thy doleful Mycenaean call. And agony. 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 Pluck out thy whitening beard. By handfuls, I by handfuls, with dismal teardrops smeared. Sob out thine aching sorrow. I will thine best obey. With thine hands rend thy mantle's fold. Alas, woe worth the day. With thine own fingers tear thy locks, bewail the army's weird. By handfuls, yea, by handfuls, with tears of dole besmeared. Now let thine eyes find overflow. I wend in wail and pain. Cry out for me an answering moan. Alas, 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 alas again. Shriek with a cry of agony. And lead the doleful train. Alas, 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 the Persian land is woeful now to tread. Cry out and mourn. The city now doth wail above the dead. I sob and moan. I bid thee now be delicate in grief. Alas, the Persian land is sad and knoweth not relief. Alas, the triple banks of oars and those who died thereby. Pass, I will lead you, bring you home with many a broken sigh. Thank you for joining us for The Persians. A big thanks to our friend, uh, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. Visit him at his website, shakespeareapproves.com or on Facebook at Shakespeare Approves, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. We've got links to all of his content and some more of our friends in the comments of this video. Uh, a big thanks again to all the actors who uh, volunteered to read with us this evening. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, if you've enjoyed this reading, all of our past readings are available on our Facebook page and a little better organized on our website, zenithplayers.com. If you want more information on us, including how to be one of the actors that is around me, you can go to our Facebook page, Zenith Players, and send us a message or send an email to casting at zenithplayers.com, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. We want to continue to express our support to everyone out there working to keep us safe and those continuing to protest and demonstrate. Join us next Saturday as we return to Shakespeare on Saturday, November 21st with Coriolanus. Thank you.